Well, good morning. Today we're gonna to be working on a trailer. Here's the beast that we are working with. It is a shore lander, not at all certain of any of the specs. The primary issues that we're having here are that the tail lights don't work and one of the bunks is rotted. There's nothing in there but old chunks of wood. No significant signs of corrosion. This is all still nice and sealed up. All we have to do is fix the tail lights, place that bunk, and add a couple of uh, straps to the back. You know, bare bones get this thing up and running. I don't know, should I paint it? Nah, not yet. So what you got here is a pretty basic four pin setup. Green, yellow, right, white. White is your ground, your return, or electrical, who's he, what's it's. Notice you got two wires in here that have yellow on them. One of those is your brake light, bright. You know what I mean? The other one is your running light. Then you got the green, right? Same, two different wires here. We can do a real quick continuity test, try to figure out what's going on. What's a continuity test? Take your multimeter, and there's a couple ways you can do it. If you got a fancy one, then you got like a little beeper in here, and when you touch things together, it'll make a noise. Or you can just ohm something out, set it for the horseshoe, and then uh, when you touch stuff together, you won't get the beep, but you'll get a number. And as long as you have a number, what that means, this electricity is flowing through. Beeps are easier. Now the general idea is for you to hit the like button. No, I'm just playing, unless you want to. We take our pins, we take our pointy, sticky pokey things, and we put the black in the ground. And what we're gonna do is we're going to go through each one of these pins, and nothing. Nothing. Oh, how about that? We have a connection, yellow and brown, and surprise, somebody merged these two things together. <sighs> Good, great, grand, wonderful. No yelling on the butt. Go get my wire snippers. Electricity moves in a loop. Right, it goes in a circle. You got goes into and you got goes out as. Electricity goes out of the car, travels down one of these wires, gets to the thing that you want to apply electricity to. It goes through the thing that you want to apply electricity to, and then you have to have a path for that electricity to come back in order for it to be able to flow. The path that the electricity takes back to get to the car where the electricity came from is your return line, your neutral wire, if you want to call it that. But in this case, what do you have going on here, right? This is a hot. When you put this on like this, you create a short because you have press your brake or you turn on your turn signal or you do something like that and it doesn't go to light anymore. It takes the path back to the house on this white wire. And that's when <laughs> fuse explode abates. We'll come back to fixing that splice. The loop circle of lightning. It's not working on that side. Gotta check the other side. No dice, precious. If these were traditional light bulbs on the back of the trailer, then what I would do next is take the bulbs out, do the continuity test all the way up to where the bulb mounts itself. But these are LEDs. All right, so our wires are cut. These are my two gazintas. This is where electricity goes into the light. This is my white that goes out to. This is where electricity returns back to the car by way of the ground. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our alligator clamp set up and we're gonna confirm that all this is good to go. Every time you add a new link to your testing chain, you always wanna confirm that everything's functioning. So my alligator clips are functioning. We're gonna take our ground. We're gonna connect it here to the gazauta. We are going to take our hot and we are going to connect it here to the Gazinta and we have no continuity at all. Okay, now diodes, LEDs, light emitting diode. Diodes only allow electricity to flow in one direction, right? So just to make sure that there's not an inversion, let's go ahead and flip these. And once again, we got nothing. Nothing there. Great. The light itself is bad. LEDs are extremely efficient, especially in comparison to traditional incandescent or filament bulbs. They are so much more efficient, in fact, that you have to like step down the amount of voltage that you were applying to them because they'd be too bright if you didn't. If you hit that bank of LEDs with the full 12 volts coming off the back of your car, it would be really annoying to everybody behind you. Most LED setups running off of a 12 volt system have to have some kind of 
inline resistor that steps your voltage down. One of the things that happens with these really cheaply made LED lights is when those internal resistors go bad, there's really nothing that you can do about it. It kills the entire light. Way less hassle to just like go and buy a new set. So that's what we're gonna do. I'll see you in a second. So let's take a look at what comes in the kit. You've got wire connectors and all that other good stuff. Some of this we're gonna use and some we're not. There's clips, there's gaskets, all that good stuff. We have a new harness, which I don't think we're gonna use. I'm confident the wiring here is good. License plate holder, passenger side light, driver side light. I also had to go ahead and pick up some of these marker lights because in the state of Maryland, markers are a requirement. And if you take a look, the wire has been completely cut off at the nub. I want to make sure we got a good ground here. For this light configuration, these posts that are sticking out of the back are the grounds. So there's no extra wire for you to have to worry about. The whole trailer as your grounding point. So you want to make sure that there's no corrosion inside the hole. Nice and snug, but not too snug because it's plastic. Solder seal connector. These are really cool. There's a ring of solder that sits right on the inside and you make your wires cross underneath that ring. Then you mount the entire thing and it gives you a marine grade sealed electrical connection. Hmm. I don't have a grommet here, so we're gonna cut a lot of this off. And use the rounded edge of the trailer to make sure that these wires don't get cut up over time. You feed the wires in, making sure that the wires touch each other the inside of that solder ring. Grab your heat gun and get it shrinking. When you see that solder melt, you know you're good to go. Those are good to go, and we can repeat the process on the other side. Now the way I'm gonna do that is by making use of these that I know are already the ground going directly to the trailer. I put the end of my white wire and I'm gonna just connect this here. Now all I have to do is set my multimeter for continuity test. Make sure we're good. Alright, we're good there. We have continuity, pin one. We have continuity on pin two. We have continuity on pin three. And of course we've got the ground. So, the wiring is good. In fact, the issue was the lights themselves were bad. Uh, by the way, these replacement lights, they are fully submersible. They are traditional bulbs. So It's 
Hey guys, no, this wasn't good. That's... Are you saying hi? Hi. Okay, I believe that we are all wired up. Everything is here. It's looking pretty surgical. We've got extra heat shrink and all of the areas where there may be pressure all clipped up along the interior. I don't know if I'm going to keep this white. So I temporarily put these zip ties on and cut them in terms of them and made sure they were all the same color because I plan to remove them probably not. What's going on, bud? Yeah, good. Okay. And then we travel all the way up here. And we have our connection, plenty of slack. All this stuff is good to go. Do you think it's gonna work? Uh, yeah. You're confident? Take a picture of my backpack leaf blower. Take a picture of your backpack leaf blower. Are we getting ready to check these lights? Yes, yes. Okay, if you see the lights turn on, I need you to yell for me. This is making sure. I will. Are you gonna stand back here and check? Ezra, are you ready? Yeah. Can you see the lights? You gotta stand behind the trailer. Now, if you see the lights come on, I want you to yell. Okay. Are you ready? It's working! <laughs> That's amazing! That's amazing! <laughs> I'm gonna turn on some blinking lights, and I need you to point to the one that's blinking. There you gotta go back there. You ready? It's right. blinking! Which one's blinking? Those one! Which one? Two! Oh, what about the trailer? That one's blinking? Okay, how about now? That's amazing! Okay, hold on. You ready? This one's this one's really hard. Which one? All of them are blinking! All of them are blinking! Yeah! Everybody. Victory! Alright, we've had enormous amazing success with the trailer lights. Now we have to fix the bunk issue, and that's gonna be super easy. We already got pressure treated two by four. I'm gonna lay that over the top of the good bunk. We're gonna cut off the stuff that we don't want. We're gonna take the fabric from the bunk that is bad. And we are going to put it on the new good piece of wood. Let's get it done. Good cool. One of the better ones you've ever made for us. Please be careful, there's sharp boo boos on there. Please don't touch stuff, okay? You gonna help me use the ratchet? Grab the handle. You got it, use two hands. Well, there you have it. The finish isn't perfect, but I think we're ready for at least a sea trial. I haven't clear coated yet because I don't know if there's going to need to be any more holes in the boat, but we know that we can run down the road. All the lights are up. Motor runs. We got safety straps now. We got our hull sealed. And I think we are ready to take it out for a water test. What did you say? I want to test it out on the boat ride. Me too. You want to do it tomorrow? Uh, no. Not tomorrow. I want to go today. <laughs> Me too, buddy. Sea trials in the morning. See how it goes.
load straps are off, battery's connected, kill switch is there, Put your power line on, let's see what happens. way too high in the water and the motor definitely needs some attention but the hull is dry as a bone. how she actually sits in the water that nose is way too high and it's even worse when my tub the backside gets in there Let's see how well that super slick does getting it back on the trailer Definitely have to put some weight up here in the front. Might be a good idea to consider putting the battery box and the fuel tank up here in this space between these first two seats. Seems like that would be wise. Motor ran, albeit unreliably. I think we'll put some fresh gas in it. Take a look at that impeller situation. Can't figure it out on my own. Then we'll get turned into somebody to make it right. Big news of the day that there is not a drop of water in this hull. On that victorious note, we're gonna go ahead and call it a day. We will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.